Hello and welcome. My name is Alex and today we're going to be doing topics. If you don't know what topics is, it's when I choose a topic, something, a current event that's happening right now in the world. I read an article out loud and kind of go over a little bit slower what it means. So today's topic is ocean forests. So let's take a look at this article. Uh, today's article is entitled, Australia's ocean kelp forest is growing at light speed, rivaling the mighty Amazon for absorbing CO2. So this is a picture of a kelp forest in the ocean. As you can see, the kelp, the kelp is right here. And you see the water, so we're in the ocean here. And so it's saying that it's growing at light speed, it means it's growing very, very fast. Something that travels at light speed is lightning that happens during a thunderstorm. So it's very, very fast. And then rivaling, rivaling the mighty Amazon for absorbing CO2. So rivaling means competing against. It might be growing faster or just as fast as the mighty Amazon. And when they're talking about the mighty Amazon, they're referring to the Amazon rainforest, which is one of the biggest rainforests in the world in South America. Something that rainforests or forests in general, trees, plants in general do is they absorb CO2. More CO2 being in the atmosphere is what increases the Earth's temperature. So let's take a look at this article. So we're right here. Great forests of ocean kelp were found in a recent study to be between four and 11 times more productive than the most productive crops grown today, like wheat, corn, and rice. Again, we're talking about the forests of the ocean, which is kelp. And there was a study that happened recently that this ocean kelp is more productive than wheat, corn, and rice. And so what do they mean by more productive? In this instance, productivity means, does this create a viable income? Is it economically viable? Is it making money? Not only does kelp remove CO2 from the atmosphere, which aids in the solution to global war warming, but it also can make money. Not only can it make money, but it can make four to 11 times more money than wheat, corn, and rice. So that's pretty significant. Next bit. On land, the fastest growth rates occur in the tropics, but in the ocean, the most productive ecosystems are found in the temperate zones where cool, nutrient rich waters create forests of golden bull and bamboo kelp that can grow 100 feet tall or 35 meters so on land the fastest growing plants or you know forests would be in tropical climate and tropical climate is going to be you know very warm and comfortable all year long they don't have winter and snow but in the ocean unlike land the, the most productive ecosystems or the fastest growth rates, so how quickly things are growing, occur where things are cool, opposed to, you know, the tropics where things tend to get very, very warm. This was the result of a global diving survey organized by the University of Western Australia, during which they found the most productive sea forests outgrow even the mighty Amazon rainforest. So it's saying that these kelp sea forests grow faster than the Amazon rainforests. These productive forests came from South Australia and South Africa, where can be found the Great Southern Reef and the Great African Sea Forest, respectively. So this cool, nutrient-rich water, where the study concluded that the most productive growth was happening is South Australia and South Africa. And there is, you know, the Great Southern Reef and the Great African Sea Forest. So these are like really big ocean landmarks. 
The great African sea forest is believed to be expanding in size, unlike many other mega undersea habitats made up of bamboo kelp and containing huge amounts of biodiversity. It stretches over 400 miles from Cape Town's waters to Namibia's, nourished by an Antarctic current known as the Benguela Upwelling. Basically, they're saying that this sea forest is getting bigger. It's expanding in size. Unlike other habitats, which might be dying, because, you know, there's a lot of ocean habitats that are under threat because of pollution and different things like that. So unlike some underwater forests, this one is actually growing and expanding. So that is really good news if you care about forests and global warming. The Great Southern Route in Australia is fringed by a golden kelp forest stretching 5,000 miles across the continent's coast. Next to the golden kelp, bull kelp can grow at a rate of 14 centimeters per day. So basically it's just telling you that the reef in Australia is huge. It's very, very big. It's very significantly large. It's 5,000 miles. And the kelp that grows there grows very fast. 14 centimeters per day is a lot, especially if you have kelp that's spanning 5,000 miles. And there's another beautiful picture of this, this kelp forest under the, under, underwater in the ocean. On land, we can use satellites to measure tree growth. But underwater things are much more complicated, as most satellites cannot make measurements at the depths kelp forests are found. Dr. Albert Pesaradona uh, from the university's Oceans Institute and School of Biological Scientists sold, told the Sydney Morning Herald. So basically what he's saying is that traditionally measuring the growth of forests is done by satellites. But you can't use satellites to measure the growth of underwater ocean forests because they're too deep, they're too far down in the water. To get around this fact, divers around the world compiled productivity reports on kelp forests, which were then compared and analyzed for nutrient levels, sun penetration, and wave exposure. So to get around the fact that satellites can't be used to measure the growth of, forest, of kelp forests in the ocean. The study, which was referred to earlier in this article, was compiled by divers. So people that dress up in scuba diving gear and they have oxygen and they go underwater and they are collecting information, collecting data to compile, to collect and generate or make these reports on kelp forests. And this is why they know that kelp forests are growing 15 centimeters per day, while, why they're so large and why they're expanding. The findings were that tropical forests were not the most productive and that those from the temperate zones contain kelps that can grow 11 times faster than wheat, corn, or rice. So in conclusion, they found, comparing that to how fast land forests are growing based on satellites, that these kelp forests are growing faster. And not only are they growing faster, but they grow 11 times faster than the most productive plants used to this day on the planet, which are wheat, corn, and rice. This mass natural production aids in the world's food security. The authors found, and nowhere is this more demonstrated than Indonesia, the aquaculture of their seaweed forests create products as varied as bioplastics alongside ice cream. So what this is saying is that the seaweed forests are making products. They're making bioplastics. So what is made out of plastic? This pen is made out of plastic. My phone case is made out of plastic. My keyboard is made out of plastic. 
my mouse. These are just things that are around me. So if we can find something that's, that you can make plastics with, it's going to be very economically viable. You're going to be able to make money off of it. And then it says bioplastics alongside ice cream. So you can make ice cream out of kelp. Uh, and they're doing this in Indonesia in a big way, as well as assisting in human flourishing. These forests play a critical role in the global carbon cycle by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Much like their productivity being much higher than terrestrial counterparts, the rate at which they absorb CO2 has been measured 30 times faster than trees on land. Wow. Okay. So they're saying, as well as assisting to human flourishing, meaning these aqua forests can be used to create bioplastics and ice cream or, you know, whatever, a huge range of products, including food. They also absorb CO2 from the atmosphere 30 times faster than the Amazon rainforest, than the trees that grow on land. Scientists from the nonprofit Great Southern Reef estimated that if just 0.001% of the ocean surface was cultivated with these productive forests, it would offset the emissions of the entire global aquaculture industry. So what this last part is saying, if we put a very minimal amount of effort into cultivating these forests more intentionally that are already growing and expanding at a very rapid rate. It would offset the emissions that would be created by making products out of the kelp and food out of it and transporting it from this country to that country, from that continent to that continent. It would offset all of that. So essentially it's saying that it would make itself carbon neutral the industry that you could build around using these aqua forests to make products that are viable, that make money. And at the same time, because they exist, they're going to be removing CO2 from the atmosphere 30 times faster than the land forests. So that is a big conclusion. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something. This is topics. And the topic was sea forest as it relates to CO2, crop productivity, and global warming. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.